Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We begin by talking about the Maya spacecraft once again. And in particular, I have taken a look at the configurations to see what was going on with the new temperatures that the Mark 1 cockpit has compared to when I had copied the configurations for it in order to make the Maya cockpit. And so we're going to take a look at the configurations in Notepad to discuss what's going on here. This is the old configuration. And actually, it was uh, being written by many things, but what we have here is a skin max temp, max temp, and emissive constant. Uh, fairly typical things in the thermal patches. And then the new one, uh, this is the new one for the Mark 1 cockpit. It has a skin temp tag in Conal, uh, or in Conal, uh, internal temp tag, titanium, skin insulation tag, true, paint emissiv emissivity tag, 0.95 and this isn't explicitly addressing the skin max temp or max temp or stuff like that so there's some danger in this I feel but anyway uh, the actual values end up being in this aromaterials.config uh, so I had to hunt for this little web of mischief and it says for Inconel the skin max temp is 1255 and then internal temp tag instruments if it has this tag it gets that max temp 448 which we actually see it does have in fact now the mark 1 cockpit does get overwritten so the mark 1 cockpit here becomes the RO mark 1 cockpit that section doesn't change the temperatures oh here it changes the temperatures here, the skin temp tag turns into RCC, and then we get the internal temp tag instruments that we were looking for, because that gives the 448. Um, okay, so that would explain it, because when we go to the materials, RCC, sorry about this, but the RCC is up here somewhere, uh, that, and it will probably have a better number. Here we go. Here it's the 2273, and then we saw the instruments thing. Okay, so let's first, uh, all my configs are all in one nice block, so we're going to try that out for size. So I'm going to just copy this and go to the section for my own config. And instead of addressing it like this, we do like this. And then we will overwrite the stuff per the RO Mark 1 co cockpit config. Okay, the skin installation tag should still be the same. Now, these aren't numbers anymore. So, will it work? So I'm gonna restart the game and see if I have the same numbers. While the game reloads, I'll just say that we're not looking for the skin max temp or the max temp to be the solution. Obviously, the skin max temp didn't get increased by that much and the internal temp actually got decreased, but it's something like the other numbers, like the paint emissivity tag, which actually gets written directly into the emissive constant, which means that there's no reason for this tag to exist, by the way. Um, uh, that number just gets written directly into the emissive constant, so this could just be called the emissive constant. Um, th that's bigger. That's more. 0.95. So this guy emit more. We're interested to see if that works out for us. The old one was 0.875. Okay, now the Maya spacecraft crew cabin does have the 448 and 2273 and presumably the other numbers are correct as well. And if I recall correctly, changing those numbers will change the value. The craft file doesn't save those values. So those will be read on the fly anyway. So... In theory, we should test this out again, but we don't have the money, so we'll wait until we do get the money. It is a sacrifice that I will be willing to make to test whether... I mean, there's no guarantee that the new numbers uh, had the goal of making this Mark I cockpit usable. They might have just wanted to write any Inconel or Titanium or whatever, RCC, etc., and create this new abstraction. Uh, and that was their goal, and they weren't actually trying to make the parts any better. Or they might have been trying to save us, who knows. 
Uh, so we have to test that. And I will sacrifice my budget in the name of the experiment. But while we await the budget that we need in order to build that, we are going to launch our second mission to Mars. Oh, we have to recondition first. Well, that's why I left, left enough time. We will, of course, also make the Mark 1-3 version. We need that for the moon anyway. Our little spacecraft right now is not going to be able to survive a lunar return, obviously. There are other techniques that we will pursue for that sort of thing later, if I descend to send the Maya over to the moon. Which was one of its stretch goals, let's say. But we'll get to that later. Alright. Tuttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Okay, booster set. Main stage. Oops, wrong way around. Main stage set. That's fine too. We were gonna separate the fairings immediately anyway. Okay, separation of ignition. We'll pause there, that may be worried, but we do have two engines. I tossed it a little bit too high. I forget that this is not a centaur centaur stage. Okay, shut down 309 by 162. And we will proceed. Obviously, we have lots of Delta V again. Oh, a little bit late. Well, no, it might be about right. Okay, go. Okay, 2.4 left. We'll see how we need to eject off here. Okay, separation. Okay, well, we'll do a mid-course adjustment, of course. Oh, before I plot it, let me just point at the sun and spin. Okay, we'll take that for now. Very good. And I'll turn off avionics, just to make sure. So I think we're done with this Mars window. And for the time being, we'll focus on Leo slash potentially moon things. We'll see. But we need money. Right at the peak here. So it should be rolling in. Well, the Maya came first, so I'm gonna queue it up again first. That's 28,000. Okay, and this is 34,000, so it is more expensive than the Maya spacecraft, but we sort of knew that. The Everything about it was more expensive, but it is more capable in terms of the lunar side, so we will see. Anyway, uh, let us build one of these. Oh yes, we have... To, oh, now that's unlock zero. Oh, because we have unlock credit. Okay. It doesn't say anything about unlock credit. Well, I guess it wasn't expecting this unlock... Why, why doesn't it have this unlock anyway, and the unlock credit up there? I don't know. Anyway, apparently we had unlock credit, and now it's building. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, I thought the change net funds would be more positive, but the yearly is negative. The daily is positive. If I take just 100 off of that pad, it's positive. Okay. Now... Uh, Maybe we should fire some of them, because I, I don't seem to use all of them. We've got a hundred applicants. Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just gonna fire a hundred. We can get them back again. Okay. Let's try the Maya again. I have no particular confidence that it's gonna work any better, but we ought to test it since the numbers have changed. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. Launch. 
Okay, past the clouds and past the speed of sound. I decided I would turn off two engines, maybe three engines right now. I'll just turn off two for G-force limitation. Let's see what that gets us. Okay, off. So we've got three on. Right there, max is six. We should probably turn off another one and then we get it halfway decent. Oh, while I was doing that though, we went too high. Not the most efficient way to go, but thanks to the fact that no boosters actually failed this time, we should have extra. Okay, separation and ignition. And we have one failure. Well, actually, it's good that I tossed it up high, then. How's our actuation? It's using some pitch. Can't hold it without the RCS? Yes, it can. Well, we can run the RCS anyway. This thing has a burn time of nearly 8 minutes. We're asking for a little bit more than 8 minutes. Okay, that apple has just got a bit out of hand, but we will try and correct that. Hopefully it can reignite. We've pushed it for a while. How is the oxygen getting consumed? Is it just leaking out? If anything, the liquid oxygen boil-off could replenish the oxygen. I guess we don't have that kind of system going. Okay, ignition. Ah, it failed. Okay, well, we're not gonna have a nice clean orbit here. Uh, we are just going to try and come down and see what happens. I'm gonna dump the hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, and we can unlock the fuel up front. See how much delta V we have. 133, barely. So, um, rather than do anything fancy, well, I mean, if we bring the apoapsis down a little bit, we can probably manage that. Guess you don't need to keep the front locked. Fuel priority should be right anyway. Not totally convinced bringing it down more sharply was beneficial to us. If it's really space shuttle configured, and it's not entirely clear that it is, but you know, they put RCC on it and they said space shuttle stuff, so uh, in that case, we would try for um, slightly negative periapsis, not very. So, I do want to save enough for our RCS system as we come down. It's still not clear why I have so much helium. Having about 50 meters per second of RCS delta V. I mean, it's actually more than that because it doesn't count residuals, but I would like about that much. Let's say 30. 30 kilometers. Well, 31 right now. Okay, we'll see what happens. Not exactly, exactly the same. In terms of the center of mass... It's just right under that docking port. We are in the atmosphere. Reasonably, reasonably balanced at 100 kilometers, but it is tending to pitch up. At some point, we'll run out of the RCS fuel, so that will become a problem. Forgot about the bomb engine blowing up. Nothing we've done has prevented that. Yeah, <laughs> it's starting. Also, I haven't heat protected the other body parts in any particular special way. It was just the cockpit. So if they start having issues. 
I mean, you should take it out of Fizz Warp. But it usually is the cockpit itself that has the problem, and it is starting to overheat now. We are going up now again. I tended to let the actual shuttle do that. One problem here is RCS fuel. If we let it skip a whole lot, we're going to run out. It is cooling off. It skipped more this time because we didn't have as deep a periapsis, so that's actually beneficial. The suggestion that we should have a lower periapsis might not have been a good one in that case. Uh, but, I mean, it sort of made sense because of how they've done heat shielding on other things. But, now, is that the landing gear? Or the wings? It's probably the wings. The wings are overheating. It's taking a bit too long as far as the RCS is concerned, though. That engine failure hurt us a little bit more than I expected. Since we've cooled off a bit and we're going slower, I'm going to try and find a happier point for the RCS. We'll try 30 degrees. The pitch down occurs at about 45 kilometers. Uh, we may not have a choice on that. I'm going to go to 20 just to save what RCS we can. If we can survive until 45 kilometers, we're in good shape. Okay, it's not overheating anymore. So, maybe their numbers are good. Maybe I just shouldn't have gone so deep into the atmosphere. We didn't even lose the engine this time. I wonder why, though. Because I haven't changed the heat tolerance of the engine at all. What made it more protected? Maybe it was just the severity of our descent before that caused a problem. Now it's overheating again. Uh, we're not going to be able to hold the pitch. It's going up, but I don't want to hold the pitch. The general rule of thumb is that I don't want the velocity to be more than a tenth of the altitude as far as heating is concerned. That would be under normal circumstances. But, I mean, we don't have much of a choice. We're not going to be able to hold the nose up anymore. It's all our aerodynamic surfaces now. We've got no MMH. We apparently can pitch up more. With, with just the aerodynamic surfaces. So I'll try. Oh, now that the bottom engine is... Oh, no, 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 okay. I mean, I know that low pitch will save the bottom engine, potentially. Where are we? Africa. Central Africa. Well, we were going to have to take some extra testing to get to the right place. But so far, we seem to have a tentative solution. Let me turn off that center of mass. Oops. It's finicky though. It's touchy. We'll have to have a set sort of procedure for how to come down and when to do what pitch kind of thing. And maybe pack some more RCS fuel in general. I like that the aerodynamic surfaces are very powerful even at this altitude. That's remarkable. I was not expecting that. So we could end our reliance on the RCS much earlier than expected. It really goes up. I mean, we do have a huge wing, so its tendency to bounce up is very frequent. <laughs> it, it likes to bounce up. At roughly Mach 5, we must pitch down. At that point, we will probably stall. At this height, we might stall at a lower speed. One downside to space plane re-entries, though, is they sure take a long time to come down. Okay. 
In a lot of respects, I'm very happy with how it's flying, especially the fact that it can control itself so high up. And get so much lift. I don't really want to go up again. <laughs> uh, that heating is worrisome. Just want to make sure we're not going to end up in any water. Well, there's Lake Victoria there. Guess we got to watch out for that sort of thing. We are under Mach, uh, Mach 5 and uh, I'm contemplating turning it to atmospheric op pilot. It's just the overheating of the cockpit that's worrying me right now. Yeah, atmospheric autopilot enabled. It's using, it's wiggling the yaw way too much though. Okay, now it's settled down. Okay, at this point we just need to make sure we have enough speed for a landing. Okay, below Mach 2, 15 kilometers. Below Mach 1, below 10 kilometers. Well, our uh, communication line should hold out until landing. It's one of those geosats. So it seems some combination of the changes they made to the Mark 1 cockpit and the slightly different trajectory that we had by necessity, we didn't go as low on the periapsis, probably saved us. I think if we were steeper on the periapsis, we would have probably met the same fate. Uh, we really needed to bounce up when we did. Can't really see the terrain very well. Once we put down the landing gear, maybe we'll have the landing gear lights to help us. Okay, landing gear down. Well, let's see. Okay, we can see stuff a little bit. Should be good enough. I don't think I need the drag chutes. Come on ground. Where are you? We've touched down. Oh, there are bumps. Okay. First time we can actually recover one of these. Recover vessel. Recover to VAB, I suppose. Well, it's supposed to be. Well, okay, it is the VAB, right. Um, I think we'll just scrap it. I, I, I want to send it to a museum, but I think we'll just take the money and run. Okay, I was planning to uh, test the KTS, the Mark 1 3 pod, as well in this video, but for reasons of success, that took a lot longer than I expected. So we'll just leave it there. That's quite enough excitement for me for one day. Uh, well, we have some interesting results and we'll have to see what we do with them. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.